Coming up on Growing Indoors with the Eagle Garden House, we're going to be transplanting some kale, taking a look at the roots of our peppers and finding out why they have not uh, produced and starting to die back. All that coming up right now. Sponsored by Eagle Garden House. At last, an indoor greenhouse equipped with complete easy lighting and watering systems. You can grow perfect organic produce and plants at your home all year round. Grow 24-7, 365. You now have no excuses. Welcome to Growing Indoors with the Eco Garden House. I'm Joy Baird. One of the first things we want to tackle is harvesting our cucumber. We have one cucumber that is ready to go. I'm going to lower the light down a little bit. I had it up so I could get in there and work in the plants. It's at the top here. Now, when harvesting any fruit of this matter, uh, we, want, we you could twist it off. It's just easier to cut it off. Now, that's a very nice specimen of a pickling cucumber. Now, we do have some issues with the with the cucumber plant because with this particular cucumber plant, it's a pickling cucumber plant, and you have to take the male flowers with a paintbrush or take them and, and contact the female flower to transfer the pollen over so it pollinates the fruit. Well, I did that, did that obviously successful with that one. And we do have these here that did not get pollinated correctly. And this could be because the pollen in the male flower had already, was no longer viable when I went through and pollinated all of these. So in order to get more flowers on your cucumber plant, you can cut the water off like we did with the tomatoes a couple of episodes ago, stress it out to where it will put on more flowers. Also by removing the fruit from the stem, that will also help stimulate more fruit production. Now one thing that I would recommend if you're going to grow cucumbers in your eco garden house is to look for a variety that is all female flowers or a non uh, it, it doesn't, it, it pollinates itself. There are varieties that are on the market that will produce all female flowers and all the reproductive parts are in those female flowers in which you don't have to go through and pollinate. So it's, it's maintenance free essentially. So we'll go ahead and leave that alone. Let that stress out a little bit and uh, allow it to put on some more flowers. Now, also we want we, we planted our cilantro here in our hydroponic system doing really well. It's starting to put on uh, many of its true leaves there and we just want to make sure you want to make sure you always keep the water topped off in your hydroponic system and uh, if it gets low you're not going to have enough flow to keep the roots hydrated and you're going to have loss of plants. Another thing talking about water lossage is in the Eco Garden House the reservoir here we've got a 33 gallon reservoir uh, on uh, the one side here that's fresh water. We want to always make sure we have plenty of water. Uh, because you'll get you'll have it set on your timer for however many minutes a day that you choose to run it and sometimes it will run dry and you'll forget about it. So you want to always make a note whether you want to mark that in your phone every so many weeks to check it but always make sure because if you have that water empty and the pump continues to run for those durations of minutes it can burn the pump up and that's not covered in the warranty because that's part of your responsibility. So now we're going to plant some kale in a hanging basket. Now we're just using professional potting soil, potting soil mix. You can use any type of medium you want to grow in, just like we have with other uh, plants that we have here. Now I started this kale and I allow it to dry out to the point where it was easy to remove it from the container. Now I've got five different plants here. I'm going to wean it down to one. And because it's kind of got a root mass that's all right there, I'm going to select the largest plant, which, or the healthiest one, let's put it that way. Um, I'm just going to trim them off at ground level. Now these, you don't want to throw away. You can use these and eat these. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. So now I'm going to, you can do this in any, any container you wish. I'm going to take this hang thing off so I can get in there better. Now you want to tease the roots a little bit just so they're not continually kind of getting root bound as they say because this is a container that root bound is the, uh, the pr practice that the plant will just continue to grow because it has nowhere to expand like it would in the ground or in a larger container. By doing this, you're not going to hurt the roots that much. You're actually going to stimulate more root growth and we'll just bury it at the same level as 
very at the same level as it was in the container. And at this point, if you have any yellowing leaves or uh, sick looking leaves, go ahead and pinch them off. So I'm just gonna put this in here. Uh, I need to actually remove some soil. There we go, that's better. Get that nestled in there, backfill, and then we'll water it in to get it established. And then we can hang this off one of the edges or we can hang it on one of the trusses at the top because kale is a plant that is shade or lower light tolerant. Uh, tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, they require full sun for best development of the fruit. With a green like a kale, you don't have to have direct sun. You don't have to put it right underneath the light. The side lights and the reflective light, the reflective of the light on the cover here of the silver will allow the plant to have enough light to develop. So we're gonna hang it, uh, we're just gonna hang it right here. And then we'll see how that plant is doing. We have a little drip there, so you kinda wanna be careful if you're hanging it uh, over the light there. It's actually gonna drip into the beets container there for right now, so it works out really well. So planting the kale, we got that planted, and then we will be able to continue to harvest off that once the plant has started to put on more vegetation. And by trimming it, that will also encourage the vegetation to develop. So there's things that happen in the eco garden house as well as in your garden and containers. And sometimes you know why that problem occurred, whether it's a crop failure or damage due to an insect, uh, a bad bug. We had planted our peppers one of the very first episodes and we had uh, Hungarian sweet peppers and chocolate bell peppers and they have died back and we're not really certain why. We've kept the water to it, we fertilized them, but this is one of those things that we're not certain why. But there, the, the plant is still somewhat green but it's not going to, in my, it's not worth trying to baby it in order for it to come back. There is a tad bit of new foliage that is developing on this. But overall, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull them up, but this gives us an opportunity to look at the root development on these plants. Now, the reason why we planted two together is the theory or the, the saying in the garden community I've heard is you plant the peppers side by side, pair them up as a friend, and they will produce more. Now, we have tried that here in the Eco Garden House. We've also tried that out in traditional ground garden. Really haven't seen the benefit of the double planting. So this will be a practice we will discontinue because we've experimented with enough that it just doesn't benefit us whatsoever. But we will pull the roots up, the plants up, and if you, uh, there, you can really tell just by pulling that they've grown out quite a bit. A yank on the plants, you can see we've got a good amount of, and you can hear they're tearing. So I, it, you don't have to be like I am here but I do want to see what kind of root development we have on these pepper plants. And it appears we have really good root development. Now also, and I'll explain this, you can see we've got good loose soil in here as well. And that makes a very important, uh, that, that's very beneficial that you want a good loose uh, potting soil mix of uh, whatever you choose to. Now with these roots, I'm gonna shake some more dirt off here. With these roots, there's a lot that can be told about roots, especially if there is really root problems. There's uh, fungal or disease problems. If the roots are discolored, which these are not, these are white, if they have bumps, and they're not uh, bumps on them and they're not part of the uh, beans or pea or um, legume family which fix their own nitrogen if you see if you see stuff on your roots that do not look normal then that can be a key factor of why the plant didn't grow or has has failed in growing but these here are very clean roots nothing appears out of the uh, uh, appears uncommon with the roots here so it shows that there was other issues that uh, caused these pepper plants to die. Um, now they're not truly dead, but they're to the point where it's not worth the effort to try to baby them, like I said. Uh, one way you can certainly tell if a plant has perished is go up, take a cutting, and look inside of it. 
if there's still moisture and it's still green, it's alive. If it's dry, like a, a, bran a branch on a tree is broke off, and then, then it's totally dead. But these here are, are past what I I'm, I'm, uh, feel comfortable about uh, trying to get them to grow. So we'll pull them out and we'll put something else in their place. Thanks for joining me. Join me again next time as we grow more in the Eco Garden House. For more information, please visit the